All right, welcome back everybody. Uh, as you can tell, we are in a different environment once again. Uh, we are still in this process of selling our homes, starting a full-time RV life, and so we're, you know, we're gonna be a little bit back and forth for now. Excuse you. Um, so, for today, I have a great, uh, a great dish that's kind of close to my love. Um, I do a lot of uh, hunting, and it's something I really enjoy, and I do with my family and friends, and we were going by this great butcher shop in Elmont um, called the uh, the Country Smokehouse, and they had some great elk uh, ribeyes, and I just had to have them. So we're going to make elk ribeyes with a black peppercorn cognac sauce. We're going to do roasted acorn squash with uh, some bacon and butter, and then we're going to do um, some broccoli spears on the side as well. So I'm really excited for this dish. I can't wait to take you along. It's going to be a little bit longer one because we're going to have to wait for this uh, to roast. But uh, come with me and we're going to have a great day again. So first I got my steaks out here. They are going to start coming up to temperature so that way we can cook them hard and fast. Um, wild game meat does not have a lot of fat and that's true with elk as well. So. What we want to do is get that nice sear on it without cooking it to death, basically. I want to serve this about medium rare, medium. So I'm letting it come up to temperature right now. First thing we're going to do is start with the longest thing, which is the acorn squash. Got a nice, uh, nice fresh one here. Um, I like to, uh, you know, try to keep my fingers away from where my knife is. Go straight down the middle and kind of, you can curve the squash as you go so that way you know you're moving with it not against it so just like a pumpkin or any other squash we're going to go ahead and clean out the seeds handy dandy bag right here um, you want to make sure you get all this all this stuff here now actually fun kind of fact is that um, these seeds you can treat sorry about that these seeds you can treat the same just as you would the pumpkin seeds. Um, I've done them with butternut squash before, not acorn squash specifically, but if you kind of tell, they are pretty much the same. So you could easily um, toss them a little bit of oil, salt and pepper, roast them in 350 for, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, see where, you, see where that gets you. And I don't think that would be too bad of a snack. So another uh, little trick that I like to do sometimes is sometimes I'll take off just a little bit off the back just to make it more of a flat so it doesn't roll around in the oven. You know when you're taking it in and out. See, nice sturdy base. Got a little rock, but that's okay. So we're gonna put this in here. Some people do them upside down. I'm gonna do them this way because I'm gonna do Actually, first, just a couple little pokey pokes, just to help get some of that extra flavor in there. I'm going to put about, I don't know, a tablespoon of butter in each one. And then, we're going to take a couple of strips of bacon. Now, I've never done it this way. This is actually my father-in-law's recipe. So, we're going to take a couple, about one piece each. Put them in here, kind of let them cook in there. That'll get some flavor in there. And then I'm going to add my own twist um, by cooking down the rest of these couple pieces of bacon in the pan. And then take out the bacon uh, bits, mix that in when we go ahead and, and uh, this is all done. But use the bacon fat to sear the elk. And it's going to make it a really nice, you know, cohesive dish. It's going to give a lot of flavor. So I'm looking forward to that. So. This is ready. We're going to go ahead and get this roast in the oven. Uh, probably, probably about 40 minutes, 45 minutes, give or take. So we're just going to let that go, let it get going. The next thing we're going to move on to, now that the acorn squash is uh, happily baking in the oven, excuse you, is I'm going to do broccoli florets 
and just make them kind of um, kind of a, a, a nicer, more upscale version of just regular pieces of broccoli. So I'm going to kind of cut them down with the stems long, and then I'm going to lightly peel them. Just give them a little bit of color contrast, and it just looks a little bit nicer. It's an it's an easy way to add a nice detail to a dish that really isn't that hard. I'm also going to julienne uh, a little bit of onion, which is just very finely sliced onion. Excuse you guys, and. <clears throat> I'm going to add that in uh, with the broccoli when I saute it as well. So I'm going to go ahead and get that started. Oh, and then lastly, I'm going to uh, dice up the bacon as well. So I'm starting with all the um, all this food. Even though it's going to be cooked, I want to start with the vegetables and stuff before I cut the meats. And then that way I save myself time. I'm not re-cleaning everything. And everything just flows nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on this. Now that we have uh, cut our broccoli down, and I've also used the peeler, as you can see, they just have like a, this nice, consistent look to them. Not a whole bunch of pieces hanging off, and it just adds that nice little detail. Next thing I'm going to do is a julienne for onion. So when I do this, I take off both ends of the uh, of the onion, just like that. I do it straight in half. So for this recipe, I'm only going to use a quarter of an onion, so I'm just going to put that one away for now. I'm going to go ahead and take out the outermost peel. Um, sometimes I like to do the next one down, just because it, it gets rid of any little uh, blemishes and things like that. It might not be that great. So, with a, with a julienne, you want to start with this side. The two cut ends facing you and away from you. And then when you go... Actually, we'll do right in half to make it easier so you can see. So I have my fingers away from the knife, so that way I won't cut myself. And then this knuckle right here is my guide finger. And I'm going to have it really close to the edge. Just one nice fluid motion. And you end up with these really nice, very consistent pieces of uh, Julian onion. You do this with a salad and it looks really nice. Excuse you. And it's just, uh, just something simple that really adds to the presence of a dish and also helps with your cooking process because it's more even the more consistent things are cut. So I'm going to do just a little bit more. And uh, one more quick tip. If you get to the point where this end is longer than this end, just simply turn it down and you can just turn it around and continue. And that's how you do it, Julia. on this a little bit in our last video but I wanted to continue to build upon this. A cast iron pan is an amazing accessory to any kitchen for any skill level. They're, they're, the only main thing you really need to know is that you can't scrub them with anything metal and you can't put them in a dishwasher. You gotta, gotta hand wash them, dry them over the burner and then oil them down every time and it always become great non-stick one of the other great things is the even cooking that the cast iron brings. So I'm going to put this on low and slowly render out the bacon that I was just cutting out. And this is really going to add that nice layer, I think, to the acorn squash. It's going to give us the fat that we need to uh, saute the elk. And then it's also going to end up being the base for part of our sauce. Um, once the elk comes out, 
whatever bacon fat's remaining, or saute a little bit of onions and garlic, add the cognac, a little bit of uh, beef broth, and a little bit of butter, and some fresh cracked pepper, and just, you know, come whip that all together. It's a pan sauce, and it's going to taste amazing. So we're going to go ahead, let this render down slowly, and then um, we're going to check out our squash in a little bit. And uh, so when we come back, we'll show you our progress. So the squash I just checked on is looking really good, nice and tender. We're going to go ahead and let that just coast along. I turned off the oven, keep it nice and warm. I've got the, uh, the saute pan here on my left. It's going to be for our beautiful broccoli with a little bit of onions. So I'll Got about a tablespoon of whole butter, get that melting. Next, I've got the pan where we had the bacon rendering. I've got that with the bacon fat. I've got the bacon bits here. And we're going to save that to mix in with our squash. We're going to let this get warm. All right, here we have our beautiful steaks out of the packaging. I put a light seasoning. It's like a garlic, garlic and uh, roasted garlic and herb seasoning just a little bit i still wanted to taste like elk um, most of my seasonings are actually still in the camper so we got to make do with what we have all right the butter is nice and melted i'm going to get the uh the onions and the broccoli in i'm also going to put a little bit of garlic in there as well like uh, about a teaspoon we're going to give a nice pinch of salt just a tad more. All right, we're gonna mix this up, get the butter all mixed in. See how nice that looks? So we're at a medium heat. So we're gonna go ahead and let that cook down a little bit. I'm gonna cover it too, not 100%, but just just enough to kind of cook that, uh, that um, broccoli there all the way through. All right, so we're looking pretty good. Nice and warmed up. We're gonna go ahead and cook this on each side for like two minutes or so. All right, let's go ahead and flip them over. Get a little bit of nice color there. With game meat, I'm more worried about the temperature because I don't want it to overcook versus the actual um, really nice hard sear on it. Because I'd rather have a perfectly cooked steak than have um, an extra pretty steak, if that makes sense. It's still going to taste the same, but we are we're getting some nice, good flavors in there. So probably about two more minutes on this side. I'm also going to add in a little bit of the onion and garlic from earlier to uh, get those start cooking to make our pan sauce. I also have about a half a cup of beef broth, since they don't make uh, elk broth. And then I also put a couple uh, sprigs of thyme that I have in the garden as well, just to give it a little extra oomph. Let's check on our broccoli. See how it's starting to get nice, beautiful green colored. The onions are cooking down. I put a little extra butter in there. Go ahead and give that a try. see with the onions nice and, and cut real thin they, they pretty much cook all the way down and they don't you know they a little caramelized there so that way they're not offensive they're just a really nice sweet little addition to the dish so we're gonna actually turn this all the way down put this right about there so that just kind of coast alrighty These little ones are going to be done first. I'm looking for a nice medium rare. I'm going to pull that off first. As you can see, the onions are cooking, the garlic's cooking. Oh, 
Alrighty. Test it for doneness. It feels about right. Alright, so I'm going to wrap this in foil just to keep it nice and warm. Lock in those nice juices. Let's cook a little bit longer here. Alright, the next thing here that what I'm going to do, take a little bit of our cognac. Um, this is the slightly dangerous part, so make sure you're very careful when you do this. So basically what I'm going to do is deglaze the pan. Uh, we shouldn't get a big flame up, um, but if we do, make sure you're standing back, protect your face. Alright. So what that's going to do is basically uh, take all the drippings that are at the bottom of the pan, the flavor from the steak, the bacon, the onions, take all that, get it all cooked up nice. Alright. So now we're going to add our beef broth. We are going to do our fresh cracked pepper. Now this isn't going to make it spicy, it's just going to give it a little bit of, little bit of pizzazz. All right. Give it a taste. Pretty good. I think um, what I'm going to do now, turn up the heat just a little bit, and I'm going to let it reduce down by almost half and then I'm going to take this uh, little bit of butter that's here still and um, it's what's called a mount of burr and basically I'm going to mount it with butter and stir it in and what that's going to do is help thicken up that sauce give a really nice mouth feel and uh, then we'll be all set we'll just go ahead and put it together the next thing I'm going to go ahead and work on here in just a minute is get the squash out um, get it pulled out of the skin and mixed up with our bacon bits and a little bit more butter if it needs it and then seasoning as well. So I'm going to go ahead and get that out and get that started. So the sauce is reduced out a little, a little over half. So I'm going to put that last tab of butter and basically I'm going to start stirring it in. Turn off my heat. And what this is going to do is mix it up. Give it that nice luxurious flavor. Good mouth feel. With regular saute pans you can uh, stir it in. You can go like this and that'll do the same idea as the whisk does but with a cast iron it's a little bit more difficult, it's heavier, but it'll work regardless. So there you are. Nice uh, quick pan sauce. See the consistency is a lot different now. It's thickened up quite a bit. We're going to give it a quick taste here. That's really good. All right. So gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go grab a plate and I'm gonna show you the finished product.
there you have it, a beautiful elk steak, some nice broccoli, the acorn squash with the bacon. It's a beautiful fall dish, wild game squash. I'm really excited to dig into this one. And we're excited to continue to share our journey and all the food that we're going to make along the way. Come back, we'll see what we're cooking next time.